welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video. We're looking at a book today called Kids of Cosplay. Here it is, here's the cover. It's hard cover, it's got nice uh, colours. It's published by uh, Thames and Hudson and it's by a photographer called Thurston Redding, a British photographer. It's got a really nice photo on the front of Harley Quinn or somebody being Harley Quinn and Wonder Women on the back. So let's have a look what's in store in this book. Incidentally, the title's a little bit misleading. It's not just kids in here. There are people uh, kind of doing cosplay from a variety of different ages, as you will see as we go through. Here's the contents page, by the way, and as you can see, there's a forward and there's an introduction bit, and then we've got the actual plates, the photos themselves with titles, and then we've got a section called the diaries, um, where we can look at kind of how we plan putting this book together. Finally, we've got an interview with him, um, conducted by Sarah McAlpine, Sarah McAlpine. We've got an index, a visual index at the end and some acknowledgements. That's how this book fits together. I like the way you get lots of different versions of the photos, different ideas before you kind of decide on the final one for each one as well. That's good. Here we have a hospital receptionist being the Little Mermaid. I love these pages. So first of all, we have a model singularly posing as Wonder Woman. She is actually a student model and bartender. And then we get treated to a group shot of Wonder Women. And there's various uh, students, models, bartenders, actress, dancers, models, human resource and employment law administrator and a model. So all different kind of like roles. They're all kind of like shedding that role to just become a collection of Wonder Women. I love it. So next up we have a supermarket worker being Indiana Jones. I love this one. We have a baby massage teacher and exam invigilator and she's being the Wicked Witch of the West. So the author says here down in the notes that it's, you know, painting yourself green is not quick or easy, but it's a fantastic escape. This one here of, of somebody just having a moment of quiet reflection there with the, the mask off, maybe a bit of a breather when they're not being Chewbacca for a second. This one's hilarious, this like, I don't know, gathering of Batmen all kind of running in different directions and doing different stuff. When I first looked at it, I honestly thought, oh, he's got like a load of people together all to be Batman. No, that's not the case. This is one person playing all the roles and a bit of kind of photoshopping, putting them all together to create a gathering of Batmen. So yeah, there's a real mixture of sources, but it's generally from either films or video games. I really like this one, the mundanity of it, the mundanity of Spider-Man pausing to get some milk out of the fridge to make himself a drink, perhaps. He's taken his mask off, he's behind closed doors, he's safe, his identity has not been compromised. I don't do cosplay myself, but looking through this book, you know, it is making me see that I can, you know, I can see how it'd be enjoyable to have an alter ego, if you like, to be able to change into somebody else, just be somebody else outside yourself for a time and then come back to being you again. I really like the photos in this book, incidentally. A lot of work has obviously gone into preparing each and every one of them, the settings, finding the locations, getting the lighting right. He talks about this uh, throughout the book. There's a few examples as well in the book where it's not actually people. So those C-3PO's there, they are models that have been constructed again using a photography approach and presumably incorporating some Photoshop, jiggery pokery. So it's not actually anyone dressing up per se. There's another one later on with Barbie in. Same thing, it's not actually a person, but it's, it's all good, isn't it? And I think it does fit within this book. We're not being pedantic here. And just to follow that up really, later on in the book we get to see the author, how he's constructed um, these pieces. So unlike the Batman one, this could easily have been the same person because they're all wearing masks, but I believe it wasn't. I believe it was four or five different people posing in their storm uh, trooper gear. I like this one. As he alluded to with, you know, taking ages to paint your face green, some of the costumes in, in this book have obviously been uh, meticulously produced. Here's Aquaman, as played by a bartender, apparently. I mean, he looks like he's just been to the toilet, I think. They don't tend to show you those bits in the films, do they? Here we have three Alices, and they're just waiting at a bus stop. You know, nothing special there, really. Certainly not in a Wonderland. It's more like Alice in Wasteland, this. And it's three different people playing those three Alices as well, albeit with similar costumes. There's apparently 70 different cosplayers featured in this book. 
And I bet they're all really proud to have made it in print. This is a manicurist uh, having a cigarette whilst playing Mystique from the X-Men. I like this, very blue. This one's interesting. It's somebody playing uh, Vault Boy from the Fallout games. It's, it says they're a professional cosplayer in the notes. This tickled me. It's somebody playing Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Of course, she was, uh, you know, computer generated, CGI, whatever, at the time, and someone's breathed human life into her here. I imagine for these cosplayers, it must be really fun, like getting your costume on and going out there. Not only do you get to feel like someone different, but you get to see other people's kind of um, reactions to to who you've become. That must be good. Right. So this must be well for me. This is my favourite photo in the book. This is Harley Quinn and you can see at the back there's a few variations on how this one was shot uh, and they obviously played around with the lighting a lot. They started with the blue light and it's kind of got rid of that. But I really like this photo. I love the, the light streaming in from the left. So we've come to the end just about of the plate sections. Just a few more to go. We've also got uh, that Barbie one that I showed you earlier with the, the figure on the hill. And then we get the, the diaries. So this is where you kind of find out a bit more about uh, how the photographer actually constructed these shots, what went into kind of putting them together and the different considerations in terms of like the compositions and the lighting. There's also a bit about um, how he kind of got into cosplay um, and there's some notes here in what is made to look like a, a diary. I suspect this is just taking some photos and it's kind of like a fake diary. It doesn't really matter. I get the gist. It's very nice to look at and some nice kind of little background bits of information in here to explain how these photos came to be. Here's the C-3PO, multiple C-3PO construction, a few different ideas. This is how the Wonder Women shot was kind of like preferred and then how the kind of multiple Batmen all kind of got put into the same photo. Same with the Alice. Here we can see the Alice in, in Wasteland as I called it and so on. Towards the back we've got this visual index. I've got a repeater, a thumbnail of all the ones we've seen, a normal index and some acknowledgements and that's the end of the book. It's a great book this one. I think anyone who's into cosplay, I can say Coldplay, if you're into cosplay, I think you should get this book. If you're looking for a book on Coldplay, you're going to have to look somewhere else, I'm afraid. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully see you next time.